Let me put this here. Okay, um, so now we're going to talk about uh, another plugin <laughs> we developed at the, uh, inside UNB Base, uh, University <laughs> of Brasilia. And as you see here, I'm the third author. So if you ask too many detailed questions, I'll have to defer to <laughs> my colleagues. And I'll give them, uh, I'll give you my email. You can email me and I'll forward the questions there. But I think I can answer most of them. Um, so basically what we're talking about is uh, GUI for a Markov logic network. So uh, basically, you know, we've been trying to, to compare MIBAN and other implementations like uh, object-oriented Bayesian networks and probably discretional models, which we have implemented in UNB Base, and we wanted to uh, compare it to Markov logic network. And oh, sorry, I, because papers with some industry partners. I, I think I need to talk to them first. Okay, that's fine. Just okay. email me then. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've tried to, to put that inside the base too and to make it easier for us to test different models and, and, and to do that because with the only command line uh, tool, we saw some, some trouble for people in trying to facilitate the, their lives. Okay, so basically I'm going to talk really briefly about Markov Logic Network. Uh, just so we have some kind of uh, background there, but not really into much detail. And then, uh, you know, we'll talk about the different uh, choices we had to choose as far as <clears throat> the reasoner behind it to, to use. And then, uh, you know, to gear you or not to gear you, what, you know, should we use it? Is it worthwhile? And what we have done so far? Um, and some conclusions. And this is a position paper, so it's a lot uh, quicker to talk about. So uh, this example here is taken from both uh, Domingo's work and also from the people, the presentation given by the Tuffy, which is the uh, reasoning tool we use behind the scenes. Uh, so we create the GUI for the Tuffy uh, API. Okay. So basically when you're talking about Markov logic networks, what we have is uh, rules and weights associated to the rules. That's it. Right? And what the rules are, uh, what the numbers are, are pretty much the cost of violation of that rule. So a really high number is saying that, you know, this, I'm really certain that this uh, rule should be followed, right? Because if it doesn't follow that rule, the cost is really high. Okay, so that's basically the idea, the idea behind it. Uh, so for instance, uh, if a person smokes, it's more likely that this person has cancer. And then you have a weight associated to it, like 0.5, right? Um, <clears throat> so basically the semantics is a distribution over possible worlds, and uh, each world has a cost associated to it, the cost of that uh, possible world, and pretty much it, it's, it's proportional to the exponential of the negative value of that cost. So uh, basically if the cost is really high, then the probability is really low. That's pretty much what we're saying. So if you violate, violated a lot of rules, then uh, the probability is going to be low, but that's true. Okay, so you know, in a really synthetic and one slide kind of way, that's what it does. Uh, what I find kind of tough to, to, to see is when I show here the next slide, is that basically what we do is have many different rules, right? So one of the rules I just showed you, the other one would be, you know, friends that smoke are more likely that the other, you know, the other friend is also a smoker, right? So, you know, people that smoke are friends, and people that don't smoke usually, you know, they're also friends. That people don't like to tolerate other people smoking in front of them. So, you know, that's kind of the basic assumption here in this model, right? Um, but, you know, coming up with these numbers are really something that is tough. And if you add a new rule and you put a really high value there, like 100, then it's going to have impact on the other rules that you already created. So that's something I find uh, hard to model on the sense that I was doing before in the other presentation that I had an expert creating this because, you know, which exact number should I put here? Uh, it's tough. And, and once I put a new rule, then it's going to have an impact on the other rules I created also. It's not uh, locally, I cannot define it locally as I can do in, in phase and networks kind of way. 
Uh, but of course, they have tons of different learning algorithms you can apply there. So you know, that's good too. Uh, if you have the data, then you can learn the weights and you don't need to worry about it. Uh, okay. So basically, what you do is again you have triples there, right? So you have data that you're certain about because you put it there, right? And on the other side, you want to infer what's uncertain. You know, what are the probabilities that certain people has cancer or all the people have cancer? And then you're going to have some probabilities associated to that because you're not certain that person has cancer or not unless it's there on your triple score. Uh, but you would like to know what's the chance, right? So basically, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, so when we were trying to decide which uh, API or which tool we would use in, in, in the, you know, behind the scenes, um, we had all a bunch of different choices. But again, remember, we're talking about uh, creating a plugin for Yandibase. Yandibase is a Java framework. So you know, being Java is a plus for us because it's easier to integrate. So you don't have to worry about how to, to invoke those, those methods and so on. Um, so that's, that's one thing that drove our choosing, right? So of course, we do have Alchemy, which is the standard implementation uh, for Merkava Logic Network. And it, it does tons of things, right? So it, from what we could see at the time we chose, it was the most uh, complete one. Um, then we had also the Beast and Procog. Uh, the Beast uh, is also in Java, but it had some we didn't see a lot of documentation, so it was hard to actually use it because we couldn't really find out how to, to, to use that API. Uh, so we kind of discarded that. And Procog, uh, you know, it, it was in Java, but also in, in, I think it's in Python. And it's a mix between the two. Uh, and we had some trouble using it also. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they do have some GUI, but it's a, a really simple one. Um, so we decided to go, hey, let's go with Tuffy because Tuffy, it, it had a good documentation. It's in Java. And besides, it didn't have any GUI. So we could explore that, you know, create a first GUI for this uh, implementation. Uh, so that's why we chose to go with Tuffy. So what did we do? So what I'm going to do here is do a comparison between what you do without the GUI and how you do it with the GUI. OK, so this is also taken from uh, the t documentation you have on Tuffy. So it's a really quick guide on how to get Tuffy started and, and how to do some inference in it. So you have the simple example, which is the, the, the smoker one. right? And I'm not going to explain everything here. But the other thing is that it's compatible with Alchemy. So all the, the uh, file uh, formats it has, it, it's, it reads the Alchemy file format. So it was easier for us also to get some other examples and run it and test to see if it was working or not. Uh, you have things like the, um, how do you call that symbol again? It just gave me a blink on the first one close to friends. So that symbol there, <laughs> which is usually above the eight, <laughs> uh, it means here it's close the world. So, yeah, asterisks. Okay, because that's the same thing. Important. So I think I'm saying it wrong, but okay, it's similar. <laughs> uh, so when you use that, uh, it, you're saying that it's closed the world assumption. So if it's not there, then it's false. Okay, so it's kind of a synthetic sugar there you can use. Uh, and then you have some not there, and so not smokes or cancer, which is the same thing as the if smokes, then you imply that it's cancer. So just another way to write it. Uh, right, and you have this other that I already talked about, and of course you have the evidence uh, file too, where you have you know Anna is friends of Bob, with Bob and so on, and you say who smokes, who, who you know that smokes and so on, uh, and then you have the query, right? And the query might be you know who has cancer, right? And what's the probability the person has cancer? So with that example, uh, what we can do is uh, then there is this command line if you have uh, Tuff installed, and Tuff needs uh, a database system together with it. So it uses uh, Postgre. Uh, so you do have to install that beforehand. And if you're using Tuffy on its own, or if you're using uh, UNB based version of Tuffy, uh, well, GUI version of Tuffy, um, you still need to, to install for uh, Postgre, because it's what it uses in the background. So basically, it's just a command line, right? So you have minus uh, uh, I, 
which is the input file, which is the Markov logic program. I have to say that, OK, that's the prog MLM. And then the evidence file is this evidence DB file, which is a text file. It's just called DB, but you know, it's just a text file. And then the query file is this other file. And you want to show the output on this, throw it in this other file, which is minus R. And, and you know, it processes and does a bunch of speeding what's happening behind the scenes. And in the end, you have that on the out the file, the text. And the standard inference is the map inference. So it's the most probable uh, world from the, the, the interpretations it might have. So it's saying, you know, who is going to have cancer, OK, based on whatever rules you have defined. Uh, but of course, you might want to have the marginal properties for that. And if you just change it by saying, you know, minus marginal, then you're going to have a different result, which is going to show you the property associated to that uh, query you just asked. But then uh, imagine having to have all these different windows open, have just a text file, plain text file. You're editing it, and you change the, you add another rule, and then you want to run again, and you have to go back to the console. You know, it might be quick for those uh, familiar with it, uh, but then again, you know, you might get something easier to use, right? Um, so, for instance, what we did is that you can actually load these files uh, uh, in our theory, and then you can, uh, for instance, add new predicates and uh, remove predicates. You can add new evidence, you can remove evidence, and then you can save again on the file, save back on the file. So we have the GUI that helps you do that. Um, of course, uh, if you have a simple query like the cancer, you know, X, whatever, uh, you can put that on just a text field and you know, press go. You don't need to have a file to do that. But if you have lots of different queries you want to run, then of course you can also do that on the file. No problem there. On the right, you see the results of running you know, both map inference and a marginal version of it, uh, which is the same we got, of course, using the same tool. Um, but uh, of course, you also have the MLM tab, which shows you the file with everything on it. Uh, and also some parameters I'll show later. So basically, what I argue here is that, OK, well, it doesn't really make that difference to that example we had before. But if you have a really big Markov logic, logic network behind the scenes uh, that, that you're dealing with, and you're you know, adding more rules and more rules and more rules, it can get really ugly. Right? And just dealing with a plain text editor can be hard to keep track of what's going on. So we want to have some features like, OK, did I already put that rule that talks about you know, person or whatever, or professor? OK, let me see. So I put the P, and you know, it kind of uh, shrinks and, and just show me the things that related to P something. Uh, sorry. I put the PR, and then again, it, you know, it filters a little bit more. And you know, finally, I put professor, and it has just one predicate with professor and has all these rules with professor and some evidence about professors, right? So it helps you keep track of, oh, I forgot to put that professor X, right? Or, oh, it's missing that rule that talks about this or that, right? Uh, of course, this is just the first step. So a lot of things can be improved here. For instance, uh, you know you need to add 20 rules about professors. And you look at here, how many rules will I have? I don't know. You could have a number there just counting to help me out, you know, figure it. Did I miss something? Do I have to add something? Um, some other things like uh, today, what we do is you click on, for instance, remove evidence. And then it shows you the combo box with the choices of the things you have filtered. Right? So it's not showing everything. It's just showing the things that you have filtered. But you know, it would be nice if I could just select it there and press delete or something. And it would do it for me. So we haven't done that yet. So this is just the first version to see you know, what else we can do. Um, uh, but some other things we have uh, thought about is that Tuffy is still on dot three version, and I think they even uh, launched new versions, which is still dot three, but it's a different version. But anyway, uh, so one thing we were worried about is that we have all these parameters you can set on console, right, uh, on command line. So you can do minus CW if you're assuming closed world assumption and so on. Uh, what we would like to, to be able to do is to actually have this be configurable. So if in the new version of uh, uh, Tuffy you have a new 
set of parameters that you can use, then this could be loaded automatically on the tool uh, and, and defined by the user without having to you know, be stuck with what they have on the first version. Right? So what we did is we have a file where you say what are the parameters that accepts the type of uh, result, uh, values it accepts, if it's boolean, boolean or if it's a number, right? And also what's the method you should invoke on the API. Because of course, if it's something that it's coming on the feature version, we don't know what's the method we should be calling. So you have to tell us what it is. So then we can say, okay, call this method passing this value and it all works out. So that's what we try to do to keep track of something that it's not really stable yet and it's really improving uh, every other month, right? So that's what, how far we got. It's not that much, but it's a start. Uh, we do believe uh, you know, it's easier than just working, working with text editors. Uh, we didn't see any other tool that tried to, to leverage on, on that. Um, you do have some dynamic search to help you filter that. Uh, we do have the buttons to add remove specific things. Uh, facilitate new parameters uh, for, for future versions. But of course, uh, it's still a beta tool, again, and needs more testing. And of course, a lot more, a lot more features could be added to this tool. For instance, uh, when you're adding a predicate, you could have code complete, right? So you could just press all, I'm adding a rule, and I just press contrary space or whatever, and it gives me the predicate so I can keep filling things. And if I want to use individual, I could also use that kind of uh, idea. When I enter a new query, I could also complete for me, and so on. So, you know, the tons of things we can still do it. Uh, not sure how, much, how far we'll get. It depends on, you know, if people are interested or not. Well, thank you very much. Uh,